I'm going to talk today about accepting healing. So when I speak about accepting healing, what I'm thinking about is what we are willing to allow ourselves to receive. You know? And so that's probably true with everything, not just healing. What are we willing to allow ourselves to receive? Um, I believe, and I think it's the science of mind teaching, that we cannot separate our physical health from our spiritual and mental and emotional states of being. Uh, because all of these are intercon interconnected. The way Ernest Holmes said it, he said there is only one life. So it's not like you have a physical life and then a spiritual life and somewhere there's a mental life and an emotion. It's all one life. You know? So if there is uh, dis-ease or some discordant condition, say, in the physical body, it's often a reflection of, of an anxiety or tension or discord or conflict on other levels of our being. You know, because physical manifestation is the last level of manifestation. Things are operating in here for a long time before they actually show up out here. So if you've got a physical challenge, my encouragement is what we need to do is that we need to look deep within to our thoughts, to our attitudes, to our emotions, you know, and, and, and really ask ourselves, wh where am I with this? You know, what can be done? Because lots of things can be contributing factors to when we have a discordant condition or some kind of sickness. And so it seems to me that, that it's really worth asking some things like, did I believe that this was somehow inevitable? Like, everybody has this, so it was inevitable for me. Or did I think that this was inevitable because somehow I still have uh, punishment wired in? Maybe punishment for my bad behavior in the past, or maybe God sent me this little punishment. You know, does, uh, does this condition that I'm dealing with solve any particular problem? You know, like, like did I get sick to get out of going to work? Right? You know, uh, does it get me something I need, like time to rest and relax? Or does it get me love and attention? Um, is this... a uh, is this a solution to some uh, inner conflict that I'm having? You know, that I can't uh, express all of my stored up feelings and emotions, and so what I do is I kind of implode on myself? Or is this an attempt to find a solution to a problem inside of me? So, so you know, if you suffer physically, and we all do at different times, in some way, this is a message that there is something to be looked at within ourselves, within our own consciousness, something to be recognized, something to be acknowledged, something to be healed. Because I think healing always, always starts from within. E even though we certainly embrace all of the wonderful external methods that we know God is working through, but if there's a need for healing, it means something is not right. Something is not as we know it could and should be. Now, all healing in the science of mind is... All healing begins in our mind. That everything starts in mind. So if you get up in the morning and you're just about to go out the front door and you look in the mirror before you open that door and you go, ugh, <laughs> God, help me. Right? I guarantee you that that will be what people reflect back to you when you're out in the world. People will look at you and say, are you feeling okay? Are you sick? Do you have a cold? Are you coming down with something? Bet you didn't sleep last night because you really look it, you know? <laughs> now, they're all reflecting back to you what you said to yourself in the mirror before you went out the front door. But I also know that if you looked in the mirror before you went out the front door and you said, yeah, this will work. I got it going on. This is going to be just fine. Looking good, you know? <laughs> and you go out and start your day. Then that will be also what people reflect back to us because everything starts in mind. So... If we have some discordant condition, there was first discordant thought. If we have a sick condition, there was first sick thought. Not necessarily, I want to be sick, but thought that said, essentially, that we are separate from God, or I have a life apart from God, or I'm not good, or I'm not enough, I'm not lovable, I'm a failure, I don't want to live without you, blah, 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 I can't go on, it's all too much. You know, most people, most people don't want to be sick intentionally. But there are maybe a few very rare cases. And I understand that it is somewhat offensive, so I'm going to ask for forgiveness before I even say this, so please forgive me, please forgive me, please forgive me, <laughs> that it can be offensive to people to say that this has to do with you. 
that if you're sick, that it has something to do with you, with your thinking, with your mind, with your use of the creative principle, with your allowing the race consciousness, the collective thinking of the world to press in on you and become your experience. Hmm? I know that everyone is spirit. We are all spiritual beings and that every single soul has a journey. And it's not for me to say what anyone else's journey should look like You know, my job is always to know that you were made in the image and likeness of God. You know, my job is to be totally in alignment with the highest and best for you, to support your fullest and greatest expression of life. You know, in the science of mind, we don't show camaraderie by saying, oh, you're in the pit, move over, let me get in with you. You know, that's not, that's not really it. We say, okay, well, I'm sorry you're in the pit, but I'm going to stay up here and hold the light and hopefully give you a hand to help pull you up out of the pit because really the air is much better up here. You know, it, see, it doesn't have to do with, um, if we think, you know, gee, this doesn't really have anything to do with me, this experience that I'm having, you know, then it, it's because of something outside of me, then we're a victim of something. We're a victim of a vengeful God. I don't believe in that. I have a God that's love and wisdom, right? And in the most absolute sense, God knows nothing about sickness. If God knew that you were sick, then sickness would be real, right? But what God knows about you is that you are whole, you are perfect, you are beautiful, you are exactly the way God created you to be. Now, you may be having some temporary condition, but that is not what God created. In the science of mind, we believe that we are made in the image and the likeness of God. This means, though, that we have free will and choice. That's part of it. And we can choose what we will. You know, so some choices support a greater expression of God, of life and love, and some do not. And you know what I'm talking about. So So God does not want anybody to be sick. It is not in God's consciousness to send sickness any more than it's in God's consciousness to send some people, excuse me, some people poverty. God is life. God is wholeness. God is freedom. God is abundance. And God never stops being those things. So, you know, we are... We're not mere mortals, right? Remember Bewitched? And Dora used to always talk to Darren and say he was just a mortal, a mere mortal. Well, we are not mere mortals. We are spiritual beings temporarily housed in a body. So if if, if we're dealing with sickness, our mind has had something to do with it. Now, this is actually good to recognize because this is where the healing will be initiated, right? If it's something outside of me, I can't do anything about changing what's outside of me. But if it's inside of me, I can have some creative input into what I'm putting into the computer of my mind. So there is a perfect pattern within us, a perfect pattern of life, of wholeness. I think of it as a divine blueprint. So just like when you build a house, you have a plan from the architect for how you're going to build. God is the divine architect, and God has a plan for each of us. However, If you were building a house, and you've got the plan from the architect, but then you decide to go off and do your own thing, you know, you say, well, yeah, the plan is good, but I think I've changed my mind. I think I want to extend this and cut back that and do a little more of this here and that. At some point, you're going to look up and say, wow, I have a mess. How did I do that? Why is the chandelier on the outside of the house, not the inside, you know? Um, See, because you're, you and I, we are all individualized expressions of divine mind. And we have the freedom to create and express God in our own way. Your mind, Troward says, one of our early teachers, he, Troward says, your mind is a center of divine operation. So what you do with your blueprint from the architect or your divine plan, you know, does not have to look like anyone else's. You know, you don't have to build your house to suit others. You don't, have to have, uh, you don't have to express health in any individual way uh, like somebody else is doing. You know, and the way you heal doesn't have to look like anybody else either. You know, I think uh, it's really true that we all are individual expressions of God. So no two people here practice spiritually the same. No two people here approach their health the same. No two people here approach relationship the same. That's because we're individualized centers of divine consciousness. So if something is so, there's a reason it's so. And if we're dealing with an appearance, say something like sickness, and it is, and it is just an appearance because we say it is not the spiritual truth, it was not created by God, and what is not created by God is not true about me, not true about you, then we have to recognize 
that this experience that I'm having has no value in it. Right? Because sometimes people hold on to something, like I asked in the questions early on, because they're somehow getting a value out of it. And we have to get really clear in our own consciousness, I am not getting value out of this experience. I've learned everything I need to learn from it. I've gotten everything I'm going to get. It can now go. You know? it's, it, it's taught me what it needed to teach me. It can go. Right? So I think we come into the realization that there is no value in this for me. I don't need it doesn't serve me. I have no use for this. I think we resist this kind of thinking because we think, well, you know, I'm this big physical body and I have a little spirit within me. And that's absolutely backwards. The truth is you are this big infinite spirit. You are this big infinite consciousness. And consciousness happens to have a little old body right now here on earth. You know, so we think, you know, who am I to heal when other people don't? Well, that's the same, the same creative intelligence, the same principle is available for everyone to work with. And you can say, well, is this my journey? Is healing part of my journey or is not healing part of my journey? You know, it, it, is there a crazy loyalty to be like everyone else, you know, just to fit in? People will sometimes say to me something like, well, you know, I don't want to stand out too much. But, you know, you can get attention and recognition for being at one end of the spectrum, or you can get attention and recognition for being at the other end of the spectrum. I would much rather get attention and recognition for being at the end of the spectrum where people say, God, you're amazing. You never get sick. God, you're so healthy. God, you look terrific. Isn't that what we want? Rather than have to have people come around and say, oh, you poor sick thing. I'm so sorry. You really are sick. Oh. It's... it's um, it says in the scriptures that the spirit of the Lord is upon us, right? So our awareness and our faith in God, we teach in the science of mind, can do all things. You know, no matter what we are seeking, it exists right now. So if you're after a healthy body, or you're after a right and perfect relationship, or you're after a job that pays you well, that already exists right now. So why wait to begin to change our consciousness, to change our habits? Why wait to have healing in our life? Right? Now, now, in the science of mind, we don't believe in a devil. But you know, I know that sometimes I have some really devilish thoughts. And so if there were a devil, it's right in here, which is like the worst possible place it could be, you know, because it would be a negative state of mind that I'm in on any particular occasion. That's what I've got to get rid of. And, by, and we do this by affirming our unity with God. I am one 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 with God. You know? And, and, and then silently we concentrate on the life and love of God that's flowing through us. You know? So the perfect life of God is flowing through me. The perfect life of God is flowing through me. This is the kind of thing we should say when we're laying on the sofa with the electric blanket turned all the way up to mother. You know? <laughs> And we need to be telling ourselves, the perfect life of God is flowing through me now. See, because our subconscious mind will accept what we entertain consciously, especially what we entertain consciously again and again, and what we entertain consciously again and again with feeling. Right? Because your subconscious mind says, wow, he's thinking about this all the time. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of feeling around this. He must really want more of this. This must be what we're supposed to bring into expression. Now, you know, everybody has the capacity to heal because the presence of God is within all of us. But we have to contact it. We have to work with it in an intelligent way. Because it says, again, also in the scriptures, according to your faith, be it done unto you. So if you don't have any faith that this is going to get better, well, that's how it'll be done unto you. But if you have faith that, you know, I believe I can have healing here, that's what will be done unto you. I think we have to be so filled with God that healing is the natural consequence. Right? That this is knowing the truth, and that's the truth that makes us free. So, you know, this means to me that we are not full of other stuff, like unforgiveness, or anger, or resentment. Because those are contrary to the pattern of wholeness that we are seeking to reveal in our life. So unforgiveness, anger, resentment, they have to go. They prevent our healing. They obstruct the natural flow of the God energy within us. Right? So we are at home in God. We teach that. So we have to find communion with that something that's greater. And so healing begins with a change in our mind. I don't know about you, but every day I can find a place where I need to change my mind. 
Where is some place in your life that you need to change your mind that you know if you changed your mind, you would have greater healing in your life? Because, you know, we cannot base our healing just by looking at the physical evidence, right? It starts deep within before it ever works its way out into physical expression, you know? Um, and I believe for all of us, if we are willing, if we are accepting that healing is taking place, it's not for me to say what it looks like. So when I say healing, most people think cure. And I think often, yes, it is cure, but sometimes it's not. And the sometimes it's not, I believe, has to do with an individual soul's journey or they're just not willing to do the work. They're just not willing to put the time and effort into getting beyond whatever the current situation is. So don't get stopped by fear or some experience of lack or somebody else's limitations that they're kind of sharing with you. You know how people love to do that. You know, when I was a kid... Um, I had a, 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 one of my grandmothers, she was really a character. And if we ever went to her with anything, like if you'd say, oh, grandma, look, I got a bite here. You know, could, could you kind of thought, you know, grandma's going to kiss it and tell you it's all going to be better. That was not my grandmother. <laughs> she would look at that and say, ooh, that looks terrible. Is that a spider bite or something? And she always, this was always her, she, I knew a woman from the old country. I knew a woman from the old country, and she got a bite. It looked just like that. Her hand fell off. <laughs> oh, my God. And as a kid, I'd be like, no, no. And I'd be all upset by this, you know. And, and, and then she'd just laugh, you know. And she... <laughs> I was gullible, you know. Um, so it's not... It, you know, healing doesn't look just one way, right? So I think um, things I must accept in order to receive healing, the first is that I had something to do with this. This has something to do with me, with my soul's journey, with my consciousness, with my thinking, with what I've been saying, with what I've been imagining. This has something to do with me. This is not some random act that the universe just plopped on top of me. My mind is creative. Now that's important because that will be the entrance to the way out, that my mind is creative. Healing is natural. All of nature tends toward greater life. God is always trying to express greater life. God did not send this situation to me to punish me because the absolute does not damn, condemn or judge. And when God looks at each and every one of us, what God sees is a being who is whole and complete and perfect, just waiting for us to get on board and recognize that. You know, God does not come down to the human level, you know, the level of effects, the level of conditions. It is our job as spiritual seekers to rise in consciousness to the truth about God and know that that truth about God is the truth about me, is the truth about you. So God is life. God is our life right now. So I believe we all need quietness. Some, some time with God. Some inner contact. Some time to reflect on a regular basis. I think this is just so important. Because you know, God is not going to speak to us over all the other noise in our life. Right? At some point, we have to pull back a little bit and say, Spirit, show me, what do I need to know here? What do I need to do? Is there something I need to do different? Is there something I need to let go of here? Because there is an inner knower within you right now that absolutely knows everything that you need to know and do. You know, the way... Because this way, if I'm, if I'm taking that time to be quiet and asking, then I don't need to create a situation where I need to get sick just so I get laid down so I have to listen to my inner voice. You know, I think a great thing for us to ask always is, okay, this appearance is here. I'm dealing with this condition. What's the message here for me today? It may not be the same message anybody else has ever received. What's in this for me? What is it that I need to understand in this situation? Now, I think it's also really important that however we proceed, 
there's no guilt, there's no blame here because nobody ever gets better because they're guilty or they make themselves feel guilty. Nobody ever gets healed because they blame themselves. That is just not a healing consciousness. Right? So don't be blaming yourself for, for a problem or for an illness or anything like that. The point is that right now, with the awareness and the consciousness you have today, you can use it to heal and to grow and be better than you've ever been. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward for a moment now to remember that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. We are surrounded and filled with God's spirit, God's love. God's very life is the life that we are living. And so as we join in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us here, knowing we are one with God and also connected with each other, I speak the word that we accept. We are wide open and receptive to healing on every level in our life. Whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, we say yes to healing. I know that anything that does not serve us, whether it's a thought or belief or habit pattern, a way of being, if it doesn't serve, we let it go here and now in this moment. And we make room for more of the life of the infinite spirit that we are to express. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, our loved ones. We know right where they are, God is. And we further know that perfect healing is unfolding for them as well. We can see it. We don't see them as the conditions of their daily life. We see them the way God created them to be, whole and perfect in every way. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world in which we live. So all of those things that pull at our attention, of which there are so many, all of that stuff on the news, of which there is so much, we say God is right there in the midst of that, as perfect healing, as reconciliation, as peace, as all needs met, as the highest and greatest outcome for everyone involved. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams and all paths to God. Because I know on the unseen side of life, we are all connected. We are, in fact, all one. So with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.